Division amongst Irish Republicans over the Anglo-Irish Treaty caused the Civil War of 1922-23. How far do you accept this verdict? Makeup of Sinn Féin Sinn Féin was a party with wide support, but the strength of the unity for the 1918 elections was a problem when something less than a republic was offered. 1917 Sinn Féin Ard De Valera found a formula that could keep the unity of the party. First get a republic, then decide the type of government for Ireland. Quote, Sinn Féin aims at securing the international recognition of Ireland as an independent Irish Republic. Having achieved that status, the Irish people may, by referendum, freely choose their own form of government. Election Manifesto Sinn Féin continued the formula of Ard Fies. It allowed the support for moderate former IPP members to hardline Republicans. Sinn Féin aims at securing a republic by 1. Denying the right of the British government to legislate for Ireland and by 2. Making use of any and every means available to render impotent the power of England to hold in Ireland. The Treaty This was to offer considerable freedom but not enough for many in Sinn Féin. In fact, the treaty, in the words of Michael Hopskin, could not, quote, have more effectively brought out and open divisions in Sinn Féin. If it had offered a little more or a little less, it may have well unified opinion for or against it. Oath of Allegiance Written into the treaty was an oath to the Crown. This implied British authority in Ireland and it would stick in Republican gullets, but more moderate people such as Griffith declared it honourable. Unity Unity through the Boundary Commission Lloyd George promised essential unity. Collins agreed with the Boundary Commission. The non coercion of Ulster was an agreed policy. I don't say it is the ideal arrangement, but what better alternative is there? Quote from Collins. However, Lloyd George declared in Parliament that Ulster had the option to remain as she is. Deal vote. 63 to 57 in favour of the treaty revealed how deeply the document had split Sinn Féin. The bitterness of the debate and personal attack between the likes of De Valera and Collins certainly contributed to the outbreak of civil war. Actions of De Valera De Valera has been accused by Tim Pakuden of not being brave enough to make big decisions himself, along with confusing those he sent in his place to negotiate the treaty. Certainly he was shocked and felt betrayed by the signatories of the treaty. His subsequent bitter and uncompromising stance against the treaty, along with his inflammatory speeches, certainly inspired many to take up arms against their brothers. De Valera's decision not to go to London as the sharpest political mind on the Sinn Féin team, De Valera's decision to stay at home, whatever his real motives, allowed others to make the big decisions and rob the negotiators of their ablest player. Quote from Cosgrave. Lack of direction to plenipotentiaries. The negotiations of the treaty, particularly Collins and Griffiths, felt frustrated at their positions as plenipotentiaries. By definition, people with the power to make decisions. De Valera said they had the power to make a deal but had to refer to the cabinet before they made a decision. Which was it? De Valera never made it clear. Eventually, of course, they signed without referring to the cabinet. Also, the plenipotentiaries did not understand Dev's external association, which had effectively been ruled out in the negotiations preceding the treaty talks. De Valera later countered that he had given a full draft treaty to the plenipotentiaries. Willingness to ignore the election result Before the elections in the 26 counties, Effectively in the issue of the treaty despite Collins and De Valera election pact, Dev claimed that the people had never the right to do wrong. In other words, even if the election went for the treaty, as it so convincingly did, De Valera would not accept it and would fight against it. In Joe Lee's phrase, the civil war was a struggle between majority right and divine right. Provocative speeches De Valera said that the volunteers would have to wade through Irish blood to get the freedom they deserved. The actions of the IRA Despite anything the politicians and people voted on, it would be crucial what side the men with guns would support. Many people reacted out of personal loyalty to their immediate superiors. Examples are, McCaughey said, If it's good enough for Mick Collins, then it's good enough for me. Surrendering Old British Barracks The surrendering of old British barracks to local IRA units regardless of their feelings on the treaty was a miscalculation by Collins. He had hoped that the sight of the old enemy army leaving would soften anti-treaty side to the document. It didn't, and it allowed key strategic strongholds to fall into anti-treaty hands. In addition, it brought out a conflict because the anti-treaty side, the Irregulars, would have to be fought out of these barracks if the Free State Authority was to be reasserted. Four Courts 
Capturing four courts by the irregular forces of Roy O'Connor showed the uncompromising side of Irish republicanism. It was an open challenge to the free state in the treaty. O'Connor hoped it would provoke the British back into Dublin and a unification of the IRA against the British. However, it made the efforts of de Valera and Collins to avoid conflict impossible. When O'Connor refused to surrender, the first shots of the Civil War would be fired at the four courts. Assassination of Henry Wilson The assassination of Henry Wilson, the British military adviser, helped to force Collins' hand in attacking the four courts. Churchill assumed that the murder had been carried out by the Four Courts IRA to provoke a British reaction. In fact, it was probably carried out by Collins orders as he blamed Wilson for the discrimination of Catholics in Northern Ireland. Churchill ordered something done about the Four Courts or the British Army would return. Collins, having waited so long to get rid of the British, reluctantly opened fire on the Four Courts. Conclusion As Michael Hopkins has stated, the treaty signing was the decisive event which led to the Civil War, as it brought into the open the divisions in Sinn Féin. However, the divisions existed from before 1918 in Sinn Féin because it was a mass movement with wide support. In addition, it was the uncompromising attitude of some politicians and members of the IRA that made a conflict very likely, whatever the treaty had, had said. As Austin Stack, hardline Republican, put it, I, for one, can't accept half Canadian powers or even full Canadian powers. I stand for a republic.